Happy New Year and welcome to the 2020 version of Live and Hive. Travis Strom now joined by, as usual, our athletic director, Ms. Jennifer Lynn Williams. And, and Jen, let's just talk about 2019. Let's wrap it up. Busy year. We've, we've talked a lot about what's been going on in 2019, but yeah. two things that really hit at the end of the year. You had the NFL Forum mm -hmm. and you had free to get inducted into the Swack Hall of Fame. Let's sit on those two points and then, and then we'll go 2020. Yeah, so uh, 2019, um, great academic year for us um, and even better close out with us being able to take uh, eight students to the NFL Forum. Four of them current student athletes, the other four were former student athletes who were still enrolled at Alabama State and are active on campus. We, um, we had the most student athletes from the SWAC with that eight, and um, we are just committed to making sure that our student athletes are prepared for life after sport. Um, two of our students, um, one was selected as part of his cohort to go on to, in, to the NCAA headquarters in mm -hmm. Indianapolis to make a pre presentation on their case study. And the other one I was informed by um, a friend of mine who works for the NFL that he is up for an um, experience ship at the Super Bowl. So we always try to put our student athletes in the best light where they can shine and just again to set them up to be successful once they leave Alabama State. Coach Frida Jackson, um, you know how I feel about basketball and women's basketball being a former student athlete. It was such a joy to watch her being inducted into the SWAC Hall of Fame. She's um, our only our second female inductee from Alabama State. Our first was Shamika Jackson, also mm -hmm. women's basketball. Then we had the legendary coach um, Larry Watkins, um, my, my second year. And now to have Coach Jackson being inducted, it was fantastic. Um, great showing of her former student athletes who came to Atlanta to support her. Um, we did an event the night before just for um, some of our Metro Atlanta alumni chapter as well as the former student athletes to really kind of pay their homage, their, their um, congratulations to Coach Jackson. And it, it was just a wonderful weekend in addition to our SWAC meetings. Right. So, um, you know, it wasn't just, you know, celebratory. We actually um, had our SWAC meetings held in conjunction with the Celebration Bowl this year. Let's forward now to 2020. Yeah basketball nine home dates start on saturday community yeah. night inside the donald racket dome three o'clock five o'clock against mississippi valley the expectations of being back home yeah. and for the folks at home that haven't had a chance to see some of the teams play they've been on television they've both been on the road a lot mm -hmm. just talk about them being at home we are just absolutely excited to have both teams back home um, this will be our first time our men um they hadn't been home and so we're excited for them to be back um, our women, you know, they played a couple home games, but this is the first conference game. And we really want to invite Hornet Nation out. Um, it's community day. Mm -hmm. Our community tickets went in like 30 minutes. I think this might be a record. I think people were anticipating this. We were trying to um, do a community game for football and men's and women's basketball each year. And um, we're just excited. Uh, I think that, um, you know, our women right now are one and one in conference play. Our men are 0-2, um, a couple tough road losses for our men, but it's always comfortable being back home. Right. And so we always talk about protecting the nest. And, um, you know, these games on Saturday and Monday really matter. And we want to go, you know, we want to finish strong going back on the road. Right. Yes. Into that for, those, game. for those of you, excuse me, for those of you that are looking for tickets, 334-229-4551. Stop by the ticket office, visit BamaStateSports.com. Or better yet, just come to the Donald Rackett Home and purchase them online. Mm -hmm. We will tell you this. We'll go ahead and spoil it for you next week. Usually it's three games at home. The games have flipped. We'll be in Birmingham against Alabama A&M next weekend. Yeah, I kind of alluded to that. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, um, Travis. But, yes, we did um, switch the, the home game with A&M. Um, their AD contacted me just to see if we would be open to help them out to move the game to Birmingham and switch dates. And we like playing in Birmingham. I feel as if it prepares our team for when we have our SWAC championship because it is held um, in Birmingham on the same arena. So uh, we will on February 8th, excuse me, January 18th, we will be taking on A&M in Birmingham. So for all of our alumni in that Birmingham area, please come out and support our Hornets. You all did a phenomenal job against UAB. Let's keep that same energy going into basketball. Let's focus on some things that are going to start at the end of January, early February. We'll hit a couple of sports today. We'll hit a couple of sports in the next one. Today, let's talk about baseball, softball a little bit. Baseball schedule gets released this week. Softball schedule got released this week. We'll start with softball. Yeah. 
a lot of home games, host a couple tournaments, but I think the thing that got everybody's attention was the fact that an SEC power is going to actually come to Montgomery and play Alabama State. Yeah, um, you know, this is Coach Bradley's first year. Super excited. Just had the opportunity to talk to him at our head coaches meeting. Um, we're expecting some amazing things out of softball. We want to continue the dominance of the swag, but again, his goal is to build on that. We also want to make sure that we're competing and winning those games against other FCS opponents outside of the SWAC and MEAC and then being competitively regionally. So with that said, we're excited to host the University of Alabama here. Um, they will come to campus. We are not going to move that game. We think it's a great opportunity for our our students, our fans, our alumni, prospective students, great recruiting tool for to come to our facility, to come on to Alabama State's campus because we have a beautiful um, campus, great facilities, and we want to showcase those. We go from a SWAC champion in 2019 to a SWAC runner-up to baseball. Yeah. Baseball, 26 home games. Mm -hmm. It's almost unheard of at Alabama State <laughs> to have 26 home games. Not just 26 home games. You're going to play a game at Riverwalk again against Troy in the Max Team Fest, but then you play Alabama, you play Auburn, and you play Tennessee. So Coach Vasquez doesn't back down from anybody. He tries to challenge his team, and he has a saying yes. that they try to play a team every year that has either been to Omaha or that is going to Omaha. Right, because ultimately, and I think baseball and softball are those sports where we can really compete for championships, mm -hmm. national championships, some regional, um, some regional wins as well. And so Coach is always scheduled hard. We talk about competitively scheduling a lot in our SWAC winter meeting, and he's done that consistently, playing the best, ultimately helps you be the best and we tell our coaches every day that we want to be competitive we don't want to shy back from anyone because ultimately it's going to be lessons learned if we can compete against the alabamas the georgia the tennessees then that's going to help us be even more um, successful when it comes swag play and our goal ultimately in baseball is to win a swag championship this year when we talk about baseball, same thing as basketball. You want tickets to baseball, you can yeah. buy them at the gate, yeah. or you can call 334-229-4551. Second year in a row, good crowds last year at home mm -hmm. with admission. We looked at, to do the same thing this year. Yes, uh, season tickets for baseball went on sale on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that was January 6th. And for the season pass, it's $50. We have a ton of home games. At the gate, $5 for entry. So you might as well go ahead and get right. the season pass, especially with us having um, as many home games as we do. The game at the Riverwalk, um, the, the Biscuits, they have been great partners with us. We actually ran into a couple of the folks from the Biscuits at uh, lunch a couple of days ago, and they're excited to host us again. Um, our fans really come out and support that game, and we get to receive you know, the ticket sales from that. So we encourage people to put that date on your calendar once the schedule is released and to really show up for that game um, at the Biscuit Stadium. Before we talk about the expectations for 2020, let's rotate back a little bit and talk about the last decade. Labeled the decade of dominance, 68 conference titles, 15 plus NCAA tournament appearances, several Coach of the Year awards, several All-Americans. Just talk about that last decade. Yeah, I, I like to say numbers don't lie. You know, um, people lie, but numbers don't lie. And so it's in the numbers. I mean, to win 68 championships over 10 years, that's to me almost unheard of on any level. You know, people get into, oh, well, it's this and that. And winning is winning. And it takes a special place, a special group of people, student athletes, to get in day in, day in and day out and to refuse to lose. And, you know, I've only been a part of it for, um, it's going on my fourth season now, so three complete years. And in those three years, we've won 30 championships. And, you know, you have some people in their four-year career don't win a championship. And mm -hmm. every one of our student athletes over this 10-year span, everyone in every sport has experienced some success. And so we want to continue that dominance going into this new decade. Um, again, I told our coaches, you know, this is the year of going after that seventh consecutive championship. You know, we put out goals at the beginning of the year. And where we are posi positioned at as a department, every team should have a goal of competing, or excuse me, competing and winning a SWAT championship. And you, we challenged our fall sports um, in, the, in the first academic year. And we were able to win two SWAC championships in 19, um, that last August semester in 19. And then, you know, football finished higher than they did the year before, mm -hmm. time for second. And then soccer, you know, they placed as well. So those points matter. Um, the fall, spring is really where we kind of 
you know, catch up and, and to kind of separate the gap. So again, making sure that we maintain our focus, that we take care of business where we're supposed to take care of business. Because we know you can't win them all. Right. But again, I expect that our teams compete day in and day out. Headed into 2020, won six out of eight in the spring last year. Yeah. Expectations going into the spring as you head in, just maybe two points behind Prairie View right now in right. the Commissioner's Cup race, which is exactly where we were last year. Yeah, um, you know, I don't really get caught up in the numbers with the Commissioner's Cup going in. I think at one point Jackson was leading. It really right now, you know, where I started to look at is once basketball season kind of ends to kind of see where we are because we know historically we've been very strong um, mm -hmm. with our track program, um, indoor and outdoor have done amazing things. You know, this is our year where we're challenging bowling. You know, bowling has had some success since I've been here, but now we feel it's just that time for them to come back and, and, and to win a SWAC championship. And then, you know, with softball, baseball, our tennis, is, our tennis teams have won every year I've been here. Um, I think them in volleyball and, and mm -hmm. track and field um, and indoor have won every year. You know, we're looking for men's golf. You know, men's golf won my first year, 16, 17, but then they fell behind the Prairie View. So, you know, Coach Hurd, he knows what the expectation is. We're excited. I, I don't think it's going to be easy. It's never easy, you know, but if we're able to do this, we will be etched in the history books and we'll have taken um, the spot from Southern. We're tied with Southern now for six SWAC championships. Well, Jaden, we know you're busy. We know it's a busy time of the year yeah. for you. We appreciate you taking time out of the day to visit with us. Thanks for having us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. And if you can't make it to the game, if you're not in the Montgomery area Saturday, make sure you – we'll put out a new link. It'll be a new site, a new link. You'll be able to watch the game on Saturday against Mississippi Valley State starting at 3 o'clock. Make sure you tune in to BamaStateSports.com for all that information. But until next time, we thank you for watching.